Praxis Prepper. Hey everybody, this is Praxis, and in this video we're going to be talking about spices that you might want to keep in your pantry. Specifically the types of spices that have benefits beyond just the fact that they add taste to food, things that have medical benefits and things like that. Before I get into that, though, I want to talk about why I've been doing a lot of these uh, kind of pantry-related videos lately. I did one last week on uh, protein in your pantry, different ways of stocking protein in your pantry. If you want to check that one out, here's a link to it uh, up there. Um, uh, the reason that I've been doing these lately is because I'm recording these in the middle of the Omicron spike uh, here in the United States, and uh, we have been uh, kind of trying to stay out of, uh, you know, stay out of situations where we might be contracting it. We've been 100% clean with COVID the entire time that, uh, you know, COVID's been spreading around the world. And, you know, my hope is that we'll be able to get through this uh, kind of third season and be 100% clean again. So we've been kind of uh, staying out of things. And I think that a lot of people don't really understand what I mean by that. I know a lot of people are new to prepping and maybe don't understand that what people like myself say here on the channel actually means something. Uh, one thing in particular, some very clever people uh, were uh, doing some uh, kind of critiques of the fact that uh, I have a lot of facial hair on me presently. Uh, last week I did as well. And these Einsteins were saying, hey genius, uh, having all that facial hair is gonna make it so you, know, you and all your you know, special N95 masks aren't even gonna work when you go outside. That's very true. But it's only a problem if you are going outside in public. And that's one thing I think uh, a lot of people don't really, don't really grasp, don't really comprehend. I think a lot of people think that, I don't think a lot of people think, but I think that there's this, um, whatever the juices are that are flowing in their brain, people have this disconnect between what I hear on this channel and other people talk about on other prepping channels in terms of them being real things that have real benefits in the real world that you can actually really do. I don't think people get the idea that one of the reasons that you you know, create a pantry and store a lot of this stuff uh, is so that you know, if you can't go out, if you don't want to go out, you don't have to go out. And that uh, getting to that point where you don't have to go out means that you actually aren't going out. I think that people are so fixated on, on, the, uh, on their, their, their rhythms, their patterns, that the idea of sheltering in place in their home must also include things like going to the grocery store or the movies. <laughs> people just have no sense that you actually can you know, not go into the world for a month. Uh, we, uh, we haven't been out uh, in any kind of a public place uh, indoors for a month. I still do play dates with my boy where we bring him, he plays with his friends, they do outside stuff, uh, you know, things like that. But in terms of going into a grocery store or any of that other stuff, I don't have to do it because of the stuff that I talk about here on this channel. And that, I think, is, like I said, kind of a disconnect with people. The things I talk about here on this channel are actual things that people could really do in real life, not just talk about, and they have a real benefit. I, I don't think I can really say that any more simple than that. When I say things like, stock up your pantry so you don't have to go out, the do, not having to go out part where you don't go out, you could actually do that, where you know if, if you know, everyone's sick, you don't have to rub shoulders with them. So if, if that's a new concept to you, like imagine that, you know, you actually have that kind of, um, option to yourself. You know, if you don't have any food in your house, you got to go out because you got to get some food, otherwise you're going to starve to death. But if you got food in your house, you actually don't have to go anywhere. Okay, so let's talk about spices. That's what this video is really supposed to be about. And having these kind of things in your house means that if I run out of one of them, I don't have to go out if I want to use it. I still got it here because I never did run out because I have plenty in the pantry. So some of the spices that I want to talk about today have sort of uh, other health benefits you know, that are on top of you know the taste and flavor benefits. Now spices are a great benefit for the, the flavor kind of benefits. Uh, you know, if you are doing a lot of cooking in your house, it's nice to be able to make the stuff taste good so that you know you don't get that impulse, it's like, I gotta get to a restaurant. <laughs> uh, you know, because you can do a good job cooking things here in your house. But there are a lot of spices that also have uh, kind of health and medical benefits. Now, I've got a kind of run of spices here that I use frequently, that I keep them out in my kitchen so I can kind of grab them very easily. I also have some other ones and smaller spice jars. These are ones that I have up here for a couple of reasons. One, because I use uh, a lot of these spices a lot, uh, you know, so it's nice to have a, a larger container of them. And the other is a lot of these are really pretty. There's these yellow ones and orange ones and white and black and green and brown and all these different kind of hues. And I think they're kind of attractive to be out on display in uh, the kitchen. Uh, I would, I'll just say it right here for all those really smart people. Yes, there is ultraviolet light coming in through the window. This is natural light. 
Yes, I know that it does break down some of the properties of the spices, but you know, suck it up. They're really beautiful. I don't want to have them out here anyway. So we're going to talk about some of these spices and some of their health benefits. Now, uh, that said, I'm not going to talk about all these spices, and there are so many other spices that are in the world that have health benefits. So I don't want to uh, suggest to you guys at all that what I'm going to talk about is all the spices that have health benefits. If you know of other ones, I, I personally, and I know many other people would love to hear about them in the comments below. Leave a comment about some of the spices that you think uh, you know, are a really important add to a pantry because of you know, health benefits or whatever benefits. So share down below. It's one of the great ways that we all learn from each other. First on the list right here, and this is one that I oftentimes hear Brad over at Full Spectrum Survival talking about, it's turmeric, which people usually pronounce turmeric, um, but there's an R in there. There's, a, there's an R in there. So I, 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 when, I, when I say uh, Feb, when I, well, okay. when I say February, I pronounce the R that most people don't. Most people say February and I say February. Um, so, you know, I'm a stickler for the letters that are actually in there. So turmeric, anyway, uh, beautiful spice. It's my, you know, bright orangey yellow spice uh, that I have in the kitchen. I use it for, uh, you know, seasoning lots of different things. If I do, um, you know, scrambled eggs, you can throw it in. It adds a lot of nice color to the stuff. Uh, it's almost like a fluorescent yellow kind of thing. It seems like the kind of thing maybe you shouldn't eat, but it is very healthful. It helps a lot with inflammation. If you have inflammation issues in your body, uh, adding turmeric to your, uh, your diet is a good way of kind of keeping a lot of that inflammation under control. And it pairs very uh, well, and this is something I actually learned from uh, Brad over at Full Spectrum Survival. It, uh, it pairs really well with black pepper. Uh, black pepper uh, kind of unlocks some of the... Uh, the benefits of the turmeric and that brings me to another point uh, you know like I mentioned uh, the black pepper being paired with the turmeric was something I learned from Brad over at Full Spectrum Survival I haven't double checked that to see you know whether there are other sources that, that uh, agree with that I find Brad to be a uh, relatively no, not really I, I find him to be a reliable source for things so I haven't really double checked that uh, and uh, it doesn't seem like there's a particular downside to throwing black pepper in it tastes good so you know I kind of throw those in anyway you know sometimes when you learn information if there's no downside to trying it uh, you know, it's like you don't really necessarily have to know whether it's 100% true because it's like, well, it, it, it's definitely going to taste good anyway. But, but the point I want to make is that anything that I say or anyone else says here online about spices or health benefits, it's good to kind of check, uh, check around and not just find somebody else that says it because, you know, like I just said, I picked up something from Brad and now I'm parroting it back on, on my channel. If you were to listen to Brad say it and then me say it and I hadn't kind of uh, cashed the whole thing in this, you might say, well, that's two sources. Well, it's really just one source because one source heard it from the other source. So it's good to really uh, go around and find as many sources about all this information uh, that are as close to the actual experience of it, that is close to the actual, you know, investigation and, uh, you know, study and, uh, you know, experimentation of, the, of these things. So try to get, get different sources on this. Don't take one person's, uh, you know, view on anything, especially if it's mine. We got some other uh, spices that I really uh, like to use, and th these are two of my favorites right here, is ginger and cinnamon. Those uh, always pair really nicely if you're making a pumpkin pie. Uh, I like to make uh, pancakes or johnny cakes in the morning, and I've recently started adding cinnamon and ginger uh, to those, and it's, it's really delicious when you add cinnamon and ginger to things. Uh, oftentimes you'll uh, add like a nutmeg or some cloves to that as well, but I, I keep the cinnamon and, the, and ginger in the kitchen. And uh, ginger has a really, really strong medical benefit, which is it uh, reduces nausea. Now, if I was feeling sick, I wouldn't take like and do like a, a ginger challenge where I take a big scoop of this powder and like throw it in my throat. My throat that would not necessarily be a good idea. But if you mix some of this in with a tea, you can really calm your stomach with a ginger. It's very, very powerful. It's so powerful that it, it, it doesn't feel like a natural medicine because you know the way it is. A lot of times there's natural medicines and it's like oh yeah they have a good kind of effect but it's not like you know when you take uh, you know some kind of like really strong like robust concoction that came from some kind of a company where it's like oh yeah that's gonna hit you right away ginger really hits you right away if you're nauseous and you take some ginger it, it can make a big difference uh, I keep it in the car whenever I'm driving around so if my boy gets car sick uh, I have some ginger on hand I have not powdered ginger but I like to do crystallized ginger I've just got it in this bottle right here uh, and crystallized ginger is candied crystallized ginger. It just has some sugar on the surface of it. Uh, it's really delicious, and uh, not well. And uh, it's really uh, a really powerful way to knock down nausea, whether it's motion sickness or whatever. I think uh, ginger is a really useful uh, uh, tool in your tool belt for uh, knocking down uh, nausea. Next one I have here is cinnamon. Cinnamon is kind of a blood thinner. 
So, uh, you know, for kind of the, a lot of the same reasons that people will oftentimes take, you know, when they get older, they might take a, you know, an app. I shouldn't have started eating in a video. It's just stupid. It's rude. It's impolite. It's unprofessional. <laughs> uh, in the same way that sometimes people will take aspirin on like kind of a daily basis is a way of kind of thinning their blood. And, you know, there are benefits of that for older people. So I've heard, again, this is me like passing a rumor around. Some people are kind of pro that idea. Some people are anti that idea. I know my dentist is all about it. He's always talking about how he does like a quarter of a pill of aspirin every day. But cinnamon is another way of kind of doing a little bit of blood thinning and that can help with some circulatory uh, situations with people. Again, these are things that, you know, just kind of add in, uh, you know, they, they, they will kind of uh, potentially endow that benefit into your life. But even if they don't, they taste really good. Cinnamon is really good when paired with ginger and all sorts of other things. I also keep rosemary up on the shelf. I'm not going to talk about any uh, specific benefits that, uh, you know, come with rosemary. I also have basil and oregano up here. I'm not going to really talk about that. Some of those, uh, you know, they have a lot of uh, kind of volatile organic kind of compounds that are good. You know, if you made a tea, um, it can be like, um, uh, antiseptic to some degree. Uh, you know, I don't really get into that too, too much, but those are some other benefits of those kind of like, uh, you know, mint family plants that have that kind of, uh, you know, uh, aromatic kind of smell. Those aromatic smells are, you know, very damaging to microorganisms. Uh, you know, that said, you know, if you get like, you know, Ebola and then you decide to drink basil tea, you know, good luck. It's not really going to be enough. But, you know, in terms of, you know, just adding things like this to your diet, it's a way of kind of, uh, you know, washing through your system. Another thing I want to talk about here is uh, cloves. I do not have a giant thing of cloves here. I can't, you know, I don't know if you can even read the label. Yeah, okay, take my word for it. It says round cloves on the thing. Uh, cloves are uh, helpful if you uh, have bleeding and you want to stem bleeding. Now, if you have it like you cut off your right arm and it's just like, you know, the arteries are spraying everywhere, you know, sprinkling some cloves on there. I'm not sure how far you're going to get with that. But in terms of uh, putting some cloves onto like a small wound, uh, they're, uh, they're oftentimes used in a lot of things that you'll buy from the store, like a new skin liquid bandage. Uh, it's this kind of like plasticky kind of... Um, uh, paint. It's a clear paint that you can paint onto a wound and uh, it has some antiseptic in there like I think it's like an alcohol compound uh, you know to kill germs but it also has ground cloves uh, or clove oil I'm sorry uh, in there and the clove oil helps to clot up the wound and you know slow down the bleeding so there's a benefit to that as well. The one other thing I want to talk about uh, today it's like I'm not sure whether it's a spice it's kind of a spice usually for seasoning it has a lot of flavor is garlic and garlic is something that I find is really, really super useful, whether it is in powdered form. I tend to like to prefer it in a fresh form, like fresh raw cloves of garlic. Um, uh, cloves of garlic, I have found, have been very effective at keeping my immune system healthy and operational. I know that they are, uh, I, I know some people have had their channel demonetized for saying that, but my personal experience is that uh, in the past, whenever I have uh, added the regimen of having a clove of garlic every morning before I would go out to work with people, uh, you know, even during clove, uh, cold and flu season, I would have whole years where I would go and, and not get sick whenever I would do that. And then when I went back to being lazy and not doing that every day, uh, you know, the cold and flus came right back. So it seems to be uh, effective for me, from my experience. Uh, I, I know there's some other research that suggests those allium family plants have that kind of benefit. Uh, again, you know, it's not, it doesn't make you bulletproof, but it seems like to me, it's a little bit of kind of added protection. If only, it, even if it only works because it makes you smell like garlic and people want to just socially distance just a little bit further away from you because you have that smell to you, I don't honestly care how it works. Just the fact that it works is pretty good to me. And you know, it's a vegetable. So again, many of these things, even if the benefit that you're looking for isn't there, you know, they're, they're, they're vegetables, they're plants, they are, you know, adding more, you know, complex little nutrients to your you know, your diet, and that's one of the things I really love about kind of medicating with food. And I know that's kind of a loaded uh, term, you know, because, you know, people, you, know you, you cut off your right arm, you know, there's no amount of celery that's going to get that arm, you know, stitched back in place. You know, there's a place for all things. But I think whenever you can handle things with these kind of low-key, healthy diet kind of situations, um, it's always a, the, the preferable uh, way to kind of handle things because, uh, you know, whenever you can prevent a problem from happening, it's always so much better than trying to fix it in the, uh, you know, a after the fact. And I think what we've seen uh, going around the world with, uh, you know, the COVID epidemic is a pretty good example of that. When you have a population of people who, you know, are living in, you know, polluted air and they're overweight and they're under-exercised and they have all these other health issues, you know, 
all these other things that might come along like COVID can be so much more dangerous than they are to people who have kept up their health. And again, that doesn't mean, you know, don't, that doesn't mean expose yourself to Ebola as long as you took your vitamins that morning. You know, there are limits to all these things, but I think whenever we can kind of push things in a positive direction, you know, that can't any, uh, that can't be anything but positive. So I hope some of this has been helpful to you. If you have any ideas about different spices that you find have different health benefits in your life and you'd love to share them, I would love to hear them below. Other people I know always read the comments below. Please share your thoughts, your knowledge. This is how we all grow together and, you know, just get smarter collectively. That's it. Thanks for watching. This episode has been brought to you in part by Prescott Caliber Club and Jeske Defense Strategies. Prescott Caliber Club is a federally licensed firearm manufacturer and retail store specializing in firearms, survival gear, and producing great online content. If you want to thank them for supporting this channel, go check them out at prescottcalclub.com. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.